I can just see quite a few attendees joining, so we'll just wait a minute or so before we kick start. Fantastic. We'll just give it another 30 seconds and then we'll okay start. perfect yeah okay i can see plenty of attendees so we'll kick start this will take a few minutes before we move into the presentation anyway so it'll give us a few more minutes for anyone else who's set to join so firstly hello thank you everyone who's joined and dialed in today for today's webinar uh, my name's anna from the continent 8 marketing team uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we start the session is being recorded um, and it will be sent to you next week, so don't worry too much about scribbling a load of notes along with the presentation. And within that email, we'll, we'll, we will be offering an hour's free consultation to anyone who's attended today's webinar, so feel free to look out for that email next week. Um, I'm really pleased Sorry. to be introducing you to Gabrielle from Continent 8 and Marcelo from Vibra Gaming, who will be joining us a little later um, to discuss the growing Latin market. With a population of over 670 million and a growing acceptance of regulation, opportunity beckons for this market. So without further ado, I'll um, pass over to Gabrielle, who's going to run through his presentation. There will be a Q&A session at the end, so if you've got any questions at all, please pop them in the questions section and we will try and answer as many questions at the end as possible. If not, we'll, we'll be sure to get back to you privately. But over to you, Gabrielle. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Can you see it very well? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you all for being here. We will talk about how to develop a strategy in the growing Latin American market. So first of all, as uh, Anna said, uh, me and Marcelo will be talking uh, about this fantastic region and a very short introduction about Continent 8. We are a 25 year experienced company in connectivity, hosting and cybersecurity services and we provide our knowledge in more than 95 data centers connected globally. We obviously, uh, we are focusing the iGaming industry, so the biggest companies uh, are part of our portfolio. Uh, we provide public, private and hyperscale cloud solutions and uh, we take cybersecurity seriously. So we not only work in the cyber security but we have a company called c8 secure that uh, protect us and our customers of any kind of cyber threats uh, all focus in the customer excellence so uh, let's move to the agenda that we'll talk about uh, today first of all uh, a high level overview of uh, Latin America, then we will go in depth in the infrastructure, regulation, cybersecurity, player habits. Uh, finally, a case study with uh, a customer, Pybra Gaming, that grow and develop their uh, business here in Latin America and then expand it to, the, to other regions or other countries. And the recommendations on how to grow in this market. As we said, let's, uh, I will share with you some figures to think about uh, the importance of this region. We are 630 million people and uh, we are estimating for 2028, 650 million people. So uh, if we, to this number, if we add the incomes, the GDP, uh, for the biggest countries in the region, like Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Argentina, Mexico, we will see that uh, we are starting in 15,000 to uh, 25,000. So it's a very interesting number. And if we add to this the social levels, if we combine the incomes with the social levels, the high level, uh, the middle class in its different uh, levels, uh, upper, mid, intermediate, and lower, uh, we have the 
41.7 of this population in these uh, social levels. Additionally, if we uh, take the the legal or yes, the legal age to to gamble in this uh, region that is 18, uh, we have a potential of almost 200 million people uh, of players. So this is a huge number in terms of the region, but not all of them live in the same country, not all of them speak the same language, and not all of them have the same habits. So we will go in depth for each one to understand how the regulation works in each country and uh, how do how do or how should we attack these uh, these countries but first of all let me give you some uh, some summary uh, lotteries in latin america are generally managed by the governments or the states like brazil uh, where the government delegated in the states or in argentina that it's run by the provinces. Uh, this is one of the tips you have to know. Secondly, the, se the second one is that uh, um, if you are a supplier, you will not need a license in, in any country. We will see that there are many countries that uh, gambling is uh, regulated, but suppliers do not require any kind of license. Uh, when we talk about the online uh, gambling, we will see that is yes, it's permitted, but not uh, all countries have the same kind of regulation. So we will have to understand which is the local regulation to see if our activity or our operation is permitted or not. Lotteries, uh, as I said, remains uh, dominant in the market. So when we talk about figures, uh, the lottery is the most important activity because it's the oldest. And uh, fantasy sports are not regulated in any country in this region. So move forward. Let's move forward to each country. Uh, before this, we see that there are uh, 21 countries in this region, and in terms of population and regulation, the first five countries represent the 76 of total population. So if we take from 200, the, 70, the 76 is a huge amount, and uh, we will be focusing because of time and because of size in these uh, first five countries. But anyway, if you have any question about the others, you can send me a message to continent data and i will be pleased to to answer any question starting with brazil uh most gambling activities are prohibited but online gambling uh, is regulated and managed by the caixa economica federal uh, they offer the lottery in in the online way and uh Recently, the, um, the Caixa delegated or uh, uh, authorized the, the states in Brazil to regulate the lottery and to play lottery games and online uh, sports betting. Here, there is a, uh, we have to take in care because there is a particular detail. The only online uh, sports betting activities authorized in Brazil are the same that the uh, Caixa Economica Federal uh, have in their portfolio. So the states can regulate, but nothing but the Caixa Economica Federal uh, offers. This is a very interesting or particular uh, detail of the gambling activity in Brazil. Then, as we can read, the casinos, gaming machine are prohibited, the betting is not regulated yet, as I explained before, and the lottery games, well, uh, as in the summary, uh, is authorized and it's a monopoly from Caixa that was delegated to the to each state. Mexico. When we talk about Mexico, it's the largest gambling market in Latin America because it was 
the first one that regulated this activity. So uh, the Mexican legislation allows the operation of casinos, online gambling, uh, bingo games, sports betting, and lottery games. So all the activity is um, is regulated and uh, permitted. You need to get a local license, and you will be able to to play there to to develop your operation there. As we can see, the gaming machine supplier license is not required. As I said before, fantasy sports uh, are not being regulated under the scope of the Mexican legislation, and lottery games are regulated, run by the state monopoly. Colombia. Colombia, from my perspective, is the flagship in terms of regulation because it's the first and well regulated uh, in Latin America because they regulated all the operation of the online gambling and uh, you know they have standardized all the activity. At these days, you can go into to call juego uh, the call juego website and you will see all the operators allowed how to get a license. You know it's very 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 well organized and you know, whatever you need, it uh, you can ask the, the regulator and they will assist you. Things that uh, you have to consider in Colombia particularly is that the financial services are very uh, skeptic uh, with the gaming companies. So uh, one of the things you, you have to take in mind will be how to manage uh, the you know, the, the, your, fi your financial operation in, in Colombia. Then racing lottery games and supplier licensing, as I said before, uh, is regulated and the suppliers do not require to obtain a license. Do you, they have, um, you know, to fill an application to say we are uh, suppliers, but that's all. Then uh, we go to Argentina. Argentina, uh, the regulation falls into each uh, province. So every time you need a, a license, like in Brazil, you will have to go to the province. In Argentina, provinces, it means it's the same like the states in Brazil. So when you need a license, you will have to apply to the specific province. Uh, and the licenses in, in Argentina are uh, authorized by the local government that generally uh, conducts a, a public tender to assign a specific number of licenses. So you have to be in contact with the province that you want to apply and to see if there is an, um, an available license. Additionally, and specifically in Argentina, to get a license, you need a, a local partner. So you cannot come to, or you cannot go to Argentina to get a license without having a local partner. This is a very important thing. Uh, again, the online gambling is uh, regulated depending on the, the province and managed by the by the gambling auto, provincial gambling authorities, then uh, the supplier uh, licensing, as in most cases, the operation of gambling activities is part of the function of the local gambling authorities or local lotteries. But there's no requirements for suppliers and gambling equipment do not require any kind of authorization. Racings uh, are regulated at provincial level again. Uh, fantasy sports is unregulated and lottery games it's a monopoly of each province so uh, all the gambling ac activity it's managed for the for each province and depending on the the type of activity is uh, there is a public tender to to assign a license and to leave this uh, activity to a, to a private operator Peru. 
Peru is it's a very special regulation in terms that, you know, in Peru, uh, the gambling activity is very active in terms that the constitution says that if it's not uh, forbidden, it's permitted. So many, many gambling companies established there under this um, under this benefit. Anyway, uh, the local, the government of the country regulated the activity, the online gambling, and uh, the regulation of this uh, activity is forthcoming. But we have to know that there are many uh, local companies, many online uh, gambling companies uh, established in Brazil, and no problem with that. Then, obviously, there are risks, uh, like in each country, but Peru, um, you know, the betting activity is very popular, so no issues with that. Then, uh, supplier license, again, racing activities, fantasy sport and lottery games, as usual, uh, the suppliers do not uh, require a license, the racing activity is regulated, fantasy sport, uh, particularly in Peru, you will require a local license. Only civil organizations can organize betting on the result of horse racing events. This is for, uh, sorry, this is for uh, racing events. Fantasy sport is unregulated and lottery games regulated as well. After talking about uh, regulation, and I believe that regulation could be required only one webinar probably because it's different in, in each country, but we have to move to the infrastructure. Uh, what about infrastructure in Latin America? There are many people that think that infrastructure is probably not reliable, not enough, but I want to take this out of your minds and say that uh, the most important thing to consider is that your international companies, all international companies, have their own network capacity to interconnect different locations. So if you are outside Latin America, uh, we can say United States, Europe, Africa, or Asia, or whatever, uh, all suppliers, all carriers, uh, have their own uh, submarine uh, cables or their subcontract or have part of a submarine cable to interconnect Latin America while, uh, with all other regions. But this is not enough because once you reach uh, the region, you want to know you will want to know how is the, con the internal connectivity. And in these five countries that we are focusing on, the backbone, the internal backbones are enough to, to provide the connectivity that the players need to reach your uh, servers, wherever uh, they are. If you are in Colombia, like uh, Continent 8, or uh, in, a, in another country in the region, or in, in Europe, it's, it will be exactly the same in terms of uh, local backbones and connectivity. In terms of hosting and cloud services, we have, sorry, we have uh, 135 data centers across uh, Latin America. And as far as I know, there are four or five more on under construction. And if you see, they are very well distributed and you can select the best data center uh, you can uh, you can pay probably. Um, particularly, Continent Aid decided to establish their operations in in Colombia because, as you see, despite of uh, the facilities, as you see on the right, Mexico has 18, Brazil has 59, Colombia 16, Argentina and Peru eight data centers, all certified. Uh, Additionally to the technical requirements, you have to consider 
two other things or three other things. One is the regulatory aspects in the target market that you will work on, taxes and latency. latency. Why these three? Because if you are too slow, gamblers or bettors will move to another uh, website that works faster to do or to play or to bet in the same tournament. Uh, taxes is because uh, you have to consider uh, your costs in this region considering the exchange rate the inflation it's a you know it's a problem in in this side of the globe so if your costs are in a different um, currency than the local currency taxes uh, could make the difference and additionally, and obviously, the, require, the regulatory aspects in the target market. Consider that not all uh, countries accept the same uh, location for your data. So you have to analyze very careful where to establish your data center to comply with all these needs. Cybersecurity. Uh, cyber security in Latin America is a global problem, uh, or to say it better, cyber security is a global problem. And in Latin America, lagging legislation and lack of awareness uh, leaves uh, all the cyber security efforts in the hands of the tech experts. So, um, as I always say, as I always say, no one will take care of us in terms of cybersecurity. And if we analyze uh, the cost of a data breach by country in, in this region, we obviously uh, will see that the United States is uh, the, the preferred country for a cyber attack because it's, it's numbers. You can see that uh, a, cyber, a cyber attack Cost is uh, each cyber attack in, in average is almost ten million dollars, but uh, Latin America it's not uh, out of this problem. And if we look on this table, you will see that Latin America has, in average, for uh, the forecast for this uh, 2023 is 3.69 million dollars increasing uh, in terms of each cyber uh, attack or a data breach. But uh, don't forget Brazil, you know, the, the biggest country in, in Latin America, because uh, probably the, um, the appetite of, uh, of, the, uh, of these people of, or, or the, of the hackers is uh, similar as the size of the country. So uh, if we look at these figures, we'll see that Brazil, uh, a data breach for Brazil is estimated in 1.25 million for this year. So it's very expensive considered the investment in a cyber security effort. So take in mind that, uh, and this is a personal experience, many companies called me, I, I called many companies asking, uh, do you have cybersecurity? No, I don't need it. We are small, but uh, as the time or in the time you become more visible because your business growth, uh, hackers take account on this and they pay attention on you. And when you're, um, when they uh, sense a ransom and they ask for a ransom for you, it's too late. So, continuing with cybersecurity in terms of figures, there were 137 billion cyber attacks attempts registered in Latin America, and particularly for the uh, gaming industry, the increase was from 167 percent in web applications attacks, and uh, this means that in, nine, in 2022 the gaming industry became the biggest target of DDoS attacks. So this uh, 
uh, means a 37% increase, a th sorry, a th the 37% of all such attacks. And obviously the biggest countries of our analysis Mexico, Brazil, and Colombia uh, were having the most uh, cyber attacks in the region. So it's not, uh, this is not new, good news. Uh, this is a real problem that we have to consider every time we establish our operation in, in Latin America. Now, let's go to the player habits. Sport betting, lottery, casino, and poker games uh, are the most common. Lotteries, it's uh, in terms of numbers or in terms of uh, activities, the biggest because it was the first one. Uh, people are very accustomed to this. And in, we not only have the, you know, the government activity or the government lotteries, we have a very active black market like the Jogodo Beach in Brazil. And um, in terms of uh, numbers, again, uh, is very, very big compared with the recent activity of the online activity. Anyway, uh, since, um, since the pandemic, uh, the online gambling in all their versions has uh, rocketed in, in Latin America. Many, many betos uh, are, um, are playing from their homes. So uh, it's not, um, you know, Brazil is not very well regulated, all other countries uh, regulated after the pandemic. But if you have a credit card and you have internet, uh, that's enough to access to a dot .com uh, website and to play and to bet, uh, particularly in sports betting. Sports betting in, in Latin America with uh, the poker activity and casino are the most uh, popular, in this order, are the most popular games, particularly during the weekends or the soccer tournaments and boxing, basketball and baseball, baseball particularly in Venezuela, so um, these are the most interesting activities in terms of uh, gambling. If we focus on the online gambling, gaming market, uh, and if we remember the 200 million bettors, and if you look on the right, you will see that 500, 533 million people have internet in Latin America, uh, almost 400 million of mobile internet users. So this means that one and a half, every three, if every two people, there are uh, three mobiles uh, in the, you know, three mobiles per two people. Uh, and the most internet users in, in Latin, with the most, sorry, the Latin American countries with the most internet users in 2022 was were uh, Brazil and Mexico. So, uh, betting, the online betting is growing and is growing very, very fast. Uh, my point of view is that it's very easy after dinner, it's very easy after lunch, it's very easy you know, when you are going on the, uh, when you are commuting, uh, bet in any activity, in any sport betting, particularly in the, during the weekends. But in the same way, this is a very, the sports bettings are very standard because there's not still specialized. Win, average, lose, and that's all. Finally, uh, for my part, uh, some recommendations to take in account after this uh, after this review. First of all, one size doesn't fit all. Language, habits, look and feel. Uh, you have to consider this if you want to success in the region. You know, uh, 
the nationalism in this uh, side of the of the globe it's still very uh, important and you if you website looks similar than the people that it's betting this uh, generates generates confidence consider the financial aspects uh, the bureaucracy in latin america is still uh, alive and very active and you know sometimes it's very very difficult to move money out so consider these aspects if you want to establish your operation locally the technology uh, we spoke about data centers and connectivity but consider uh, the latency as a key factor of success connectivity again if you are global analyzed the end-to-end -end points and carrier if you have a local carrier consider multiple local carriers to um, be sure that they, you are always on or live cyber security be sure your servers applications and network are well protected again no one will do it for you latin america it's uh you know uh, there's no regulation in terms of cyber security it's not the cyber security in general is not in the agenda of the government so we have to take care of our servers again uh, and to summarize these recommendations strategies must be tailored to each market in the latin american region well and now uh, i believe that the second part is uh, not only the um, not only the theory of my analysis or my experience i will share with you uh, a video uh, about the an interview with uh, marcelo blanco from vibra gaming that it's a it's a very renewed uh, company that started in Latin America, growth in Latin America, and it's expanding to to all other to many different regions around the globe. So uh, let's continue with this part and with the interview. And thank you so much, Gabrielle. Um, let me just share that video with Marcelo right now. Thank you. Hi all, uh, after many years working for C8, I had the opportunity to meet a man I knew how to join technology and businesses in a very particular market. Visionary and entrepreneur, he co-founded an iGaming company in LATAM when others were still thinking about it. Let me introduce Mr. Marcelo Blanco that will share his insight with all of us. Hi Marcelo, thanks for being part of this webinar. Thank you, Gabriel, for having me here, and thank you for the introduction, of course. No, I appreciate your uh, appreciate you being here. So uh, I'd like to start asking you with you know with the first question that uh, I believe that all the audience will will want to know is uh, what were the challenges that Vibra Gaming had to face when developing an iGaming company in Latam. You know, considering uh, technology, cybersecurity, and obviously economic and cultural aspects. Okay, that's a, a good question because uh, let me try to get all the points that you're mentioning, which are really important. But uh, if I start with technology, I would say that uh, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared for all the different markets or the different markets that are opening in Latin America, all the markets that are growing here, all the new regulated requirements. And for that, uh, I would say that uh, it was really important for us to have a strength, a strong partner uh, on the technology side which, well, you know who we choose for that. Yeah. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we are using continent date, in, especially in Colombia, 
uh, for having our servers and using all the infrastructure located in different regulated markets, which really helped us moving on with all the different requirements that uh, all the markets are, are having. Also, uh, if you look at uh, security aspects, Latin America, it's a complex market. I would say that uh, maybe not the complex, the more complex one, but uh, it's a complex market with a lot of people trying to try new stuff, trying to find what he, they can find and see what they can open or crack. So it's important for us to be secure. So having cyber security mechanisms in place, uh, it's uh, it's important for anyone uh, opening in in any market, and I would suggest in in Latin America as well. In terms of uh, you mentioned economic, well, that's that's a, a key one, right? In Latin America, it's a, really a, a tough ground for growing a company. And uh, not only for the economic matters, but also for getting the, the right resources at a good price, right? Because uh, there are many, many great uh, people in Latin America, well-trained people. Uh, we have, I would say that we have grown a really strong team uh, we are really happy with our team, but it is uh, difficult to find key people like that uh, anywhere in the world. And of course, Latin America is not an, ex an exception for that. So um, in terms of, uh, you mentioned cultural uh, aspects. Well, it's not the, the place where I'm the, the best one. But uh, I would say that I'm lucky to have a, a really good partner there and being partner, you know, very well with uh, Ramiro Atucha has been uh, really something great for me. And of course, for Vibra Gaming to, to be established in Latin America and to have the growth that it's having right now. Interesting, very interesting. It's a, uh, yes, Latin America, it's, it's not an easy region. Uh, let's go in depth with other, with other aspects of these, you know, questions or things that I believe that the audience would like to know. And let's talk about the region and understanding the local nuances in Latin America. For instance, or examples being language, currency, betting behaviors, etc. Do you take the same approach for all countries within LATAM? How did you approach this? No, <laughs> the answer is no, the, the, the short answer. Uh, well, we, first of all, our main approach here, or I would say that our key approach is to be flexible. We need to be flexible. We need to allow for change. We need to allow for uh, different requirements uh, from uh, our customers, from regulators. Uh, there are people really creative out there, and we need to, to help them grow their business. So uh, it happens both in our platform business with Viber Solutions or even in our content business with Viber Gaming in which we found that, of course, there are some things that are common ground for all the content being distributed in a particular region. But uh, if you consider Latin America, you have a huge diversity of uh, devices uh, and connectivity. You have uh, really different uh, response times or network times, you have very different latency. So we need to adapt to that. We need to provide a different content for different markets. We need to be aware, really aware of that and, and provide customized content for that. And we have in Latin America, we have uh, new regulated markets 
that are living along with some some people that it's used to having a much more relaxed approach so we need to bridge that difference uh, to be able to deal with the regulated markets and to provide the right solution the the compliant solution for all of those markets so if we go strictly to content I would say that uh, each audience has a particular taste. We need to accommodate to that. Latin markets are really looking and are eager for new content, for new media to access this content. But at the same time, I would say, and this is just an opinion, that uh, they are not expecting, we are not expecting complex content uh, as I would say, as opposed to uh, Nordic countries. Okay. That's, that uh, <laughs> makes sense to you. Totally, totally. And I guess that uh, the language in a region that we have at the minimum, two different languages, you know, like Portuguese and Spanish, and each Spanish in each country, it's quite different. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and obviously the look and feel, because you know, people want to 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 feel represented or want to be represented on the game. So to to adapt this to to each country, I yeah. guess it's a big effort. Absolutely. Even um, talking about languages specifically, even if you consider that uh, maybe non-Portuguese speakers. We understand Portuguese as Portuguese, but uh, we Spanish speakers, we know that Spanish from Spain is not the same as Spanish from uh, Mexico or Spanish from okay. El Salvador or Spanish from Ar Argentina. Well, in Brazil, it happens the same. And even in some regions in Brazil, consider the size of a country like Brazil. Even in some regions of Brazil, you might have some different ways of uh, speaking about the same thing so you need to adapt your content you need to be aware of that interesting very interesting, very interesting. and uh going to to the economic side latin america and caribbean inflation rate for 2022 was 8.3 percent a 443 percent increase from 2021 Slowing growth and high inflation can create a challenge in socioeconomic outlook. How about Vibra Gaming? Are you managing this? Because the economic side, I mean, you know. Well, this is a really very interesting challenge that we are facing. And anyone that is getting from to, to this region coming even from North America, Europe, or maybe any other region, uh, might even sound really scary. Uh, inflation, you were talking about numbers that uh, me being an Argentinian, it's like a joke, but uh, let's not yeah. get into that. <laughs> let's not get into a particular It's, it's a general number, you know, to, to look optimist. <laughs> yes. I will say that uh, in Latin America, inflation management is something like a skill that uh, we get since we are bo born, because uh, we are used to deal with that. We are used to be having to manage the the moving prices. I mean, no one will consider uh, the the possibility of having a static price for anything we know that prices change and they change really fast in the operation uh, on the operation perspective we have several tools implemented we have different mechanisms and procedures also to deal with this just to give you an example and to maybe something that we do and might even sound strange from an external perspective is that uh, we allocate some time and resources to review and update all the bed levels of the games regularly with the operators. 
because that in allows for, for the debt levels to accommodate to a growing inflation that uh, makes the players keep the, the similar expenditure uh, along the time considering that uh, inflation varies the number but the expenditure should remain the same interesting 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 well and continuing with the economic side uh what about e-commerce and payment methods which should be the right approach in this scenario local global what are the benefits and constraints of each option you know well here well all the all this uh, chat has been on, at the personal level of course this is my opinion but certainly i would say local i mean okay our view is that uh, there is no such thing it, it might sound really ominous but there is no such thing as a global currency or payment method in latin of course there are you can pay with credit card and it works that's fine but uh, what we see is that definitely is required to have a local solution for each country you can see that countries like brazil they have more than 90 something percent covered by pix which is their local currency their, their local payment method the, yes, which has it's currently nationwide accepted and it's the main uh, payment method in in brazil you have the uh, pix like solutions in many countries in peru in argentina you have their own local solution so for us this means that we need to have a local provider at least one local provider in one of, in, in each of the countries that we are providing service this of course leads to uh, additional payment methods being integrated to the platform which generates an additional workload, both on the technical and even an operational side. But at the same time, it gives us much more flexibility and a better service for our customers, which is our main driver. Fantastic, so, very, very clear. I would say local. <laughs> well, fantastic. Uh, well, Marcelo, we are arriving. We are arriving to the to the last question. So, uh, after this, you know, uh, walk around all aspects uh, of the eye gaming in in Latin America. Uh, if we look forward, what do you predict for the industry and specifically for the region for the next five years? Which is your vision on this? well it's uh, i like this kind of question because there is no right or wrong here uh, at least for now uh, i would certainly expect to see much greater coverage uh, in terms of regulated markets for latin america in the next five years i mean i would expect to see much more regulated markets uh, okay. I expect also to see a level up in technology, but I would say that uh, on top of all, I would expect to see a new breed of players, younger and super enthusiastic, players that will force us to, to provide always new and innovative content. We are already working in Vibra on that line we are creating content not only for today's players but also for the players of tomorrow we are bringing new technologies new functionalities innovation and attractive content to to our everyday growing audience in latin america we know that uh, players in latin america uh, in regulated markets they are let's say fairly new to vetting but uh, maturity will be much faster 
than it happened to be in in markets in European markets where it took several years. I would say that in Latin America, with all the experience around the world, it's going to be much much faster the adaptation and the hungry for new and innovative content. It's going to happen really soon. So that's what we are looking for to to be there right away. Yeah, for sure you will be and. Well, Marcelo, I want Marcelo, to thank want you very to... much for sharing your experience and knowledge. We arrived to, we to the end to of the Q&A, and, &A, &A. and uh, I'm pretty sure that it will be very, very useful for the audience. Thank you again for sharing your thoughts, and well, see you in, at the next event. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Gabriel, thank you very much for, for your time, for inviting me here, and... Well, always a pleasure working with you and with your team. So uh, we are always looking to be increasing our business with Continent Aid. And uh, well, uh, really grateful for this opportunity to to talk with you. Great, a huge thank you to um, Marcelo there from Viber Gaming for taking his time to, to run that Q&A. Um, I'm conscious of time, we've just got a few minutes left before the end of, an, of the hour, so we'll try and go through as many questions as possible with Gabrielle. Um, the first yeah. one being, how is the Latin market keeping up with player experience trends? Well, the player experience trends are, well, you know, uh, Marcelo uh, was talking uh, particularly about this, and you know, the um, the new gaming people, you know, the the youngest are moving to the fantasy games and the esports. So uh, I believe that the future is in in these two in these two roads or in these two ways. Um, Fantasy sports now nowadays is still you know you are not betting on this you are just playing winning you know a cup uh, final amount you know but uh, betting for the different teams it's a uh, you know it's it's the challenge on the future and the same in the esports uh, I believe there is a new uh, very important market working on this and it's growing very very fast. Brilliant. You just actually answered the, the other question that came in, which was, how do you see the ah. massive esports in the region? So you must have predicted that one. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, how can operators protect their businesses from cyber attacks? You obviously discussed, you know, how they're growing in the region globally, um, some scary kind of statistics there. So what can a business do to protect themselves? Well, my recommendation is, uh, you know, my my previous job was a was a CTO, and in general, um, the company or the business board understand board understand that uh, cybersecurity is a cost. And let me say that cybersecurity is one of the best investments in the company because if you are an online gaming and you want to be up and you want to be sure that your uh, that the user experience is the best that you uh, that you want. That if you want that your users bet again, not only the first time, uh, cybersecurity it's a key factor to keep your applications up and running. So don't uh, don't forget to contract a very good uh, cybersecurity protection because two or three days down makes the customers move to or makes the players move to the to another application this is my recommendation perfect thank you very much um there's a question here about emerging technologies um what do you expect to see come into latam and what will kind of be the disruptive emerging technologies in the region well the technologies disruptive technologies uh probably all the 
3D activity, you know, the, this immersive activity in terms of, you know, moving from the esports to the gambling. Uh, I believe that this could be um, this could be an emerging market, and in, not in the next two or three years, but probably in the next five years, this activity in terms of maturity could be more attractive. Okay. There are still there is a lot of room for the for the online gambling assist right now. Of course. Okay, the final one is um, on eye lotteries, which I know you touched upon earlier in your presentation. Um, which LATAM countries are showing an interest for eye lotteries? Well, uh, as far as I know, most countries in Latin America moved from the standard lottery in the, you know, in the land-based lottery. Uh, to the eye gaming or the eye lotteries activity, but not all of them already have. So I believe that the interest in the eye lotteries, since it's the most important in terms of incomes uh, activity, it's a uh, you know it's it's a very interesting market. I believe that all lotteries in Latin America are interested on that. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, that's all we've really got time for today. So um, I just want to obviously say a huge thank you for, to Gabrielle as well as Marcelo who joined us earlier. Uh, the team from Continent 8, including Gabrielle, will be at SBC Summit Latin America towards the end of October, beginning of November. Um, but just a reminder, we will obviously be sharing uh, the content post event uh, next week with that opportunity to get an hour's free consultation with the Continent 8 team. So uh, look out for that in your inbox if you're keen to take that up. Um, but that's it. So thank you very much, Gabrielle. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for everything. And thanks to all the audience. Thank you. See ya.